Welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at Indian Summer. This is a one to four player tile placement pattern building abstract strategy game where you will be filling in your forest floor with leaf tiles, animal tiles, all while collecting resources that allow you to take special actions or alternate main actions. The player that fills in their forest floor board completely wins the game. Now that we know what the winning condition is, let's take a look at the components setup and how gameplay works in Indian Summer. Now let's take a look at the components. The two double-sided main boards, one side is for the multiplayer game and the other side is for the solo mode. Double-sided forest floorboards, double-sided backpack tiles. On one side they show a backpack and on the other side they show a player aid for your resources. The starting player tile, which are hiking shoes. The berry bush. The leaf tiles in red, orange, and green. The red have a length of five, the orange have a length of four, and the green have a length of three. Squirrel tokens. Animal tiles. Treasure tokens, which are berries, nuts, mushrooms, and feathers. And then finally, your rule book. Now let's take a look at the setup. We're going to be setting this up for a three player game, which takes 10 steps. Step one, get your player board and your backpack tile. Shuffle the forest floor boards and get one forest floor board. Get a backpack tile and place it next to the bottom left of your player board. Then place the remaining forest floor boards and backpack tiles back in the box. Step two, place the main board in the center of the play area. You're gonna place the main board on the multiplayer side in the center of the play area. Step three, sort and place your animal tiles. You will sort the animal tiles by type and place them on their corresponding locations on the two main boards. Then you will place the corresponding resource on the raccoon, badger, and fox tiles. Step four, separate and create supply pools for each of the treasure tokens and the squirrel tokens. Step five, create your player path. You are going to shuffle the leaf tiles and then each player will randomly draw five leaf tiles, making sure that they draw two green, two orange, and one red. Then place them to the right of your backpack in order, green, orange, and then red. Step six, create the common path. You are going to place some of the remaining leaf tiles in a circle around the main board and resources, leaving a gap in that circle to be able to place your berry bush. Step seven, place the berry bush. You will place the bush at the end of the common path counterclockwise. Step eight, place the remaining leaf tiles in a pile in the corner of the play area. Step nine, get your player resources. Each player is to get one berry, one nut, and one mushroom. And finally, step 10, select the starting player. The last player to have been walking in the forest gets the hiking shoes and is the first player. Now let's take a look at the gameplay. A game consists of turns until someone completely fills in their forest floorboard, which will then indicate the final round. A turn consists of a mandatory main action and optional secondary actions. You may do these in any order on your turn and you may perform as many secondary actions as you wish. Now let's take a look at the main actions, the treasure tokens, and the animal tiles. Starting with the main action. For the main action on your turn, you can take and place one leaf tile of your choice from your player path, or you can take and place one squirrel token from the supply. Tiles can be placed on any empty squares or printed treasure squares, but can't overlap or go off the board edge. If, when placing that tile, the hole in the leaf tile goes over a printed treasure square, you would place that treasure token from the supply on that hole. So in this case, the first player placed their green tile in the top left corner of their forest floorboard, where the hole went over the printed treasure. If, when placing the tile, you complete one of your six grids on your forest floorboard, you would gain all of the resource tokens placed in that section. 
So when our first player finishes their top left section of their forest floorboard, they would then gain that resource that they just placed on their board. When you place the last leaf tile in your player path, you would refill your player path by taking the tiles next to the bush going clockwise. Then you would move the bush to the next available tile. So if our first player placed their last tile, they would refill their player path, keeping the same order that the tiles were in on the common path. When there are less than seven leaf tiles in the common path, you will refill the common path with the random leaf tiles that you set aside during setup. Now let's look at your treasure tokens. The value order of your treasure tokens are berries, nuts, then mushrooms, then feathers. The berries and nuts will give you special actions, while the mushrooms and feathers will give you an alternate main action. If at any point you want to exchange treasures, you may exchange two of the same treasure to go up in value to the next treasure. So you may exchange two berries for one nut token, or two nut tokens for one mushroom token, or two mushroom tokens for one feather token. And this is depicted on the main board. If at any time you want to go down in value, you may do that in a one-to-one -one exchange. So one feather for one mushroom. Now let's look at each of their actions. They are all listed on the other side of your backpack tile. For the berry action, you will pay a berry token to refill your player path no matter how many tiles you have left. Or if you have five in your player path, you can get a sixth tile by paying a berry. You can never have more than six tiles in your player path. Next is the nut special action. You would pay a nut token to place a squirrel token on your forest floor board. Next, the mushroom action, which is an alternate main action. You would pay a mushroom to take and place one leaf tile from two opponents' player path. These are the tiles next to their backpack. If you're playing a two-player game, you would take a tile from an opponent and then one from the common path. If when doing so, you place the last tile from a player's path, then their path would refill immediately. And then finally, the feather action, which is an alternate main action. You would pay a feather to place two leaf tiles from your player path. Now let's look at the animal tiles. During your turn, if you have a continuous group of holes, you may place an animal tile from the main board covering those holes. If they cover printed treasure holes that the resources have already been taken, you would gain that treasure again. It's good to keep in mind that the animal tile can be smaller than the group of holes, but it must go over only holes, and you cannot have any tokens on those holes. When placing the raccoon, badger, and fox, you would gain an additional resource that were placed on those tiles during setup. So if player one had placed their tiles like you see here, they would have finished one of their grids, been allowed to clear the three resources, and they could place an animal tile matching those holes. And if they do so, they would gain three additional berries. Once you finish taking your turns, turns would continue clockwise until a player completely fills in their forest floor board. When a player completely fills in their forest floor board, players will finish the current round. It's good to keep in mind that nut resources in your supply is the tiebreaker. After that round is finished, the player that completely filled in their forest board has the best forest floor board and wins Indian Summer.